probably know that there's a new Bugatti coming. It's called the Chiron, and I hope when you see it that it's doing something like this, or maybe this. You see, the Veyron, the original hypercar, I suppose, has never commanded the awe and excitement of cars like the Carrera GT, Enzo, or latterly, the P1 and LaFerrari. Maybe it's because so many seem to spend their lives parked up outside Harrods or on Casino Square, instead of actually being driven. So before we experience the shock and awe of the Chiron, let's take a look at what the Veyron is really about. Here in Grand Sport Vitesse form. I have to say, I've always felt that the Veyron got a bit of a bad rap. There seems to be this feeling among enthusiasts that it's just a numbers car, that it doesn't have anything else. <laughs> That's 1183 brake horsepower, an 1106 pound foot of torque, and a certified top speed of 254.04 miles an hour with the roof down. And while it's great to get a reminder of those numbers and what it feels like before experiencing the Chiron, what's really amazing about it is it does feel cohesive and there's a quality to everything. The steering in particular is absolutely lovely. It's got this real lightweight but detailed feel to it. And the whole car just feels sort of composed, but also it's just exciting and intense and really usable. But that doesn't detract from the experience. It's really, really good fun. And I think that sense that this car has had some real love and skill poured into it to make it a proper driver's car is probably down to one person. He's called Loris Picocchi and he's the supercar test driver. Formerly of Lamborghini, later working on the EB110 GT, Pagani Zonda and various Koenigseggs, before becoming Bugatti's test driver. And with the Chiron, he had a much freer hand to create a properly focused driver's car. Can you tell us if you were given more freedom to be a bit more aggressive with this car? Yes, yes, it was important for us to, 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 to get from him uh, input, well, okay. He told us when we reach this point where you don't know if you must focus more on comfort and sport, agility and performances, please take, take the last options. When we tune the four-wheel drive system, the car has to be almost like a rear-wheel drive. We you know, give to, to the customer the, 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 the enjoy, you know, enjoy. It must be safe for sure, but just get this feeling of the rear-wheel drive and then just slide and then go. So uh, for us it was important to have this, uh, this uh, direction, and this uh, input from, from our president, our bosses. This then is a Bugatti that perhaps we can all celebrate for putting driver involvement first. And my God, it looks good. There's an aggression and confidence, a sinister swagger. Let's deal with the extraordinary numbers first. The quad turbocharged 8 litre W16 produces 1,479 horsepower and 1,180 pound foot from 2,000 to 6,000 RPM. Just two of the turbos operate at up to 3,700 RPM to improve response and then all four work in harmony. Final figures are yet to be announced, but the car should do 0 to 62 in under 2.5 seconds and 0 to 186 miles an hour in around 13.5. The carbon fibre monocoque is all new and much stiffer. It now features electronically adjustable dampers and the seven-speed dual clutch box has been beefed up still further. 
The four-wheel drive system is also much more rear biased with a maximum of 30% of torque going to the front wheels and a clear decision that this car should feel rear driven most of the time. Now it's my turn to feel those changes, at least as much as I can from the passenger seat. Okay, here we go. Here we go. comes in and then gets stronger ramps up the more the more gears you take the more performance just ramps up it doesn't feel natural that is proper nuts perhaps it's no surprise that the Chiron can take your breath away and make you giggle like a kid on a roller coaster but the scale of the performance gain is huge there's so little lag such consistency from low revs right up to the limiter and a kind of precisely delivered violence that borders on surreal. More impressive is that each and every element of the car matches the sheer thrust. The body control is phenomenal. The grip from Michelin Cup 2 tyres is a huge improvement. It's like the Veyron has sprouted wings and slicks. And through a couple of corners, I get to feel the rear-driven balance that Loris has told me about. It feels genuinely agile. Then a simple twist from handling mode to the more serene EB mode, and the Chiron relaxes for the journey back to the factory. The Veyron created the hypercar sector, and perhaps now the Chiron is set to redefine it completely. It's a silly car, but silliness on this scale is something akin to genius. <laughs>